Okay, I've begun recording. Uh, I will read my legal document that I have to read at the start of the meeting. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that you are unable to do so, um, despite our best efforts, we will post recordings of the meeting on Amherst Media and there will be minutes and transcripts available as well. So I'm gonna to call to order the uh, Amherst Public Art Commission meeting of February 28th, 2022. And I'm going to check to make sure the members who form a quorum can hear me and are present. So, Jim Barnhill? Yep. Dara Wire? Yes. Ellen Kiter? Yes. Great. And I'm hoping that Shoshona will get here, um, but we will proceed without her. So, let me bring up my agenda. Sorry. Should have gotten that ready beforehand. All right, so we have a presentation today by uh, some members of uh, Emmer Sunrise, I believe, who are with us as attendees for the moment. I will bring them in as official participants uh, shortly. Let me see if. Well, sure, I guess we should just do that, yeah. So normally we would start with the uh, the um, chair report, but I have them, I wanna bump them up on the agenda so that uh, we can get them going. So why don't we start with that? Is that okay with everybody? Sure. So do we have three? How many? How many? We have four. You'll see their names when they come up. Thank you. We have to list that on the minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm bringing, bringing you guys in. You can start your cameras and or mics. Let me know that you can see us and hear us. I can hear and see you. Great. Um, and I'll have you guys introduce yourselves in a second once I know everybody's here. Mark is having trouble here. Let's see. Or I'm having trouble with it. Good girl. Oh, no. Okay. Julian, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, Let's see, Lyndon, can you, can we see or and or hear you? Right now I get a, I don't see your image and I get a blank, I get a muted mic. Nope, and also Mark, I can see that you're in as an attendee, but I cannot seem to promote you to panelists for whatever reason. No. So, Lyndon, are you there? No. And Mark, let's see, I can try to allow you to talk. Mark, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Where's Mark? He's... Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. I cannot see you. That's fine. If that's the way you want to be. Yeah, they are. <laughs> what is your last, Mark, what is your last name, please? Uh, Ricker, R-I-C-K-E-R. -E Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll get everybody, but Lyndon is still, I see a name, but no, it's, it, it's muted. Is anybody able to get in touch with him and get him in? OK, 
Julian and Rita, either of you guys. <laughs> no? Uh, Julian, do you think you could Slack message him? Because I still don't have access to Slack. I can give that a try. Yeah, sorry about this. That's all right. Uh, Jim, can you see everybody's name so you can get this for the minutes? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thanks. I got three people. Is that the total? There's four. I don't see the fourth name. Which do you have? We have Amitra, Julian, and Mark. And there's also Lyndon Paisel. Okay, hang on. And and that Lyndon is here? Uh, well, we're not sure. <laughs> well, I don't want to write him in unless. He's here, and his name is here. That's true. Maybe he's a. Uh, it's not on my really. Maybe technical difficulties. He's not on my screen. Is he on yours? Yep. Are you showing all speakers? Your view is set to show. I, I show. Gallery view. Oh, I don't. All right. So, what was his name be spelled? L i n d e n. First name. My last name was P a e s s e l. All right, um, Julian and Amrita, are you, which of you or both of you going to be presenting? What is your um, plan? Uh, basically, I will be presenting my okay. screen um, and speaking for an introduction, and then I'll pass it off to Amrita. Okay, so would you like to get started? Might as well. Uh, might as well, yeah. Um, I spoke with Lyndon. It appears that he is having some technical difficulties joining the meeting. Um, so may or may not be able to attend. Okay, so introduce yourself um, and then tell us, you know, go into your presentation then, um, and Rita can do the same when she takes over, I guess. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my name is uh, Julian Hines. Um, I am a uh, Amherst High School. I'm a sophomore and um, I've been a husband at Sunrise Amherst for about a year now, maybe a little more. And um, I'm also involved in other town affairs as some of the folks on this call are aware of. And I will start sharing my screen. Can you see this? Yes. Fabulous. Um, so yeah, Sunrise Amherst is a local chapter of the Sunrise Movement, and the Sunrise Movement is an intersectional youth-led organization um, that uh, has, was founded in 2019 and um, has local chapters set up uh, all across the country, including in, in Canada, and I believe there might be one or two in Mexico as well. Um, and we are the Amherst chapter, and um, we've been working on election campaigning, uh, the FY22 and FY23 budget. We did a school walkout on climate justice, climate change. We uh, helped with a protest um, that was around stopping uh, the pipelines, gas and oil through uh, the Native American reserves and such. Um, and we've held community involvement campaigns and forms um, on both the budget and other issues locally. Um, we, Sunrise Amherst has been around for many years, but we recently took over as a new hub leadership after our other leadership went off to college in other parts of the country. So I will pass it off um, to Amrita, but I just will touch on really quickly the idea of what we're doing per, per mural, why we want to create a mural is to spread awareness on issues such as climate change, encourage uh, local residents and youth uh, to be active in our community and bring out our town's history of progressive, vibrant um, activism within Amherst that has been alive for many years. Um, and simply it'll make our town more beautiful and help create a good sense of community. So those are some other reasons and I'll pass it off to Amrita. Yeah, thank you, Julian. So I'm Amrita Rutter. I use she, her pronouns, I'm 15 um, and I'm a sophomore at ARHS and I'm also a hub lead like Julian. Um, yeah, 
We're hoping to do a mural, like Julian said, um, and we've already kind of created a design that we'll show you in a second. Um, but first we wanted to kind of tell you why we're doing this project. Um, so we're doing it because obviously there's a climate emergency and we think that a mural would not only address that um, to some degree and push people to be more active, but also kind of reassure people a little bit because I think that often we feel very alone in this fight and it's really easy for us to kind of be overwhelmed by our emotions and just give up and be inactive. Um, and I think just talking about it and acknowledging that it's a problem that affects all of us can be really helpful for people to kind of open up their hearts a little bit and start thinking about ways that they can be involved. Um, Cause it's really scary. Um, and then as Julian said, it also would probably be, I mean, we're hoping it will be beautiful. I guess that's subjective, but um, yeah. So it would make our time more beautiful. Um, it could help us build some community sense, like knowing that there are young people fighting as well as older people. Um, and I mean, we have a long history of activism in our town, so it can help kind of bring to life that. Um, yeah. Um, and Lyndon, if you're here, you can present this, but if you're not, I can do it for you. Yeah, I won't be able to present from where I am. You will or you won't? I won't. Okay. <laughs> Since do you want me to, phone. I mean, do you want to uh, read it? Sorry, that's what I mean. Um, yeah, I'll read it. Okay, cool. And introduce yourself too first. Yeah, um, I'm Lyndon Basil. Um, I'm a seventh grader um, in middle school, and I am part of the Amherst Sunrise Creative Team. Um, and I cannot find the presentation, sorry. You're good. All right. Um, yeah, and this um, draft was made because um, to represent like the potential problems of climate change and what can be done to help it. Um, on the left side showing the basically post-apocalyptic world that would be reality after, um, if we don't do anything about climate change. And then there's the way to achieve um, the, the side on the right, which is um, through small climate justice organizations like Sunrise. Well, it's not small, but the Amherst one is. And on the right, we have um, the world like the ideal world, that's all good. Um, and I was just gonna give a little bit more logistics too. All right, yeah. Unless, do you have more? Sorry. No, I, I don't have the, 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 the script here. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll say it really quick. Julian, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're hoping to do it on an electric box, like you said. So like what the design we just showed was like um, the front of it. We haven't decided like exactly what the sides would be yet, but we're hoping to kind of continue that theme and put on the left side more like destruction-y stuff and on the right some more like peaceful and hopeful things. And we might put some like hopeful words on it somewhere. Um, and we're estimating that it would take us about two weeks to complete it. Um, and we would kind of buy all the supplies ourselves and paint it with a team of people our age from the um, creative team in Sunrise Amherst. Yeah. That it? Thank you, Amrita. So that's the end of the presentation. We appreciate everyone um, listening on the slide above. Uh, you can see that we have an example of uh, activism type related art um, related uh, to says power to the people. And it's not in Amherst, but it's a good example of what activism art can look like. And then another one of the electric boxes that is pretty prominent at the main intersection downtown. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll have lots of questions um, for you. Does anybody wanna kick off questions yeah mine is for the minutes how can i get copies of that because i'm supposed to include the minutes the documents and pictures that were shown to the committee during I, the I, know if you, I can send it to you if you put your email 
um, in the chat or send it to me. If Julie, Julie, you can email it to me. That'll be fine. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. But any questions about the proposal? I was wondering if you had a particular uh, electric box in mind already, or if you were looking to us to recommend one. Yeah, we were uh, thinking that we would more look to you to recommend one just because we haven't surveyed or looked at all the electric boxes. Um, and we were thinking that it would probably be best if we got your recommendation and followed along those lines. Are you guys um, located at one particular school? Uh, nope. We, the majority of our membership is at Amherst High School, Amherst Regional High. Um, but that means there's folks from all four uh, member towns of that. And there's also folks at Amherst Middle from all four member towns. We have some folks in the Amherst Elementary Schools. And we also have um, folks who are in college at some of the local colleges. and. Um, people from outside of town. We have members in Northampton and South Hadley and Holyoke. Were those the boxes you want to to to? Uh, were those what you wanted to do for your project, or were those illustrations of boxes? Uh, this slide was illustrations of boxes that have already been done. Um, okay. That we would sort of we wouldn't use the same design, we wouldn't uh, copy it, but um, sort of ideas of what it might look like um, in town. And then above this picture um, is meant to be what we envision on um, a box that we would create or design. Um, and this would be the front facing side with a similar theme along the sides mm -hmm. and back. So yeah, this and that one on, is- This would be on a box somewhere. Yes, that's correct. Go ahead, there. I'm just curious to know if what the shield is in the design. Oh, that's the our logo. Logo. It's the Sunrise the logo Movement logo. Sunrise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me. Um, give you guys a little bit of background on the electrical box program that we've run in the town of Amherst. So that program is called Electrify Amherst and um, it started, I think it ran from 2017 to 2020, three successive years, something like that, maybe 2018, 2019, 2020. <clears throat> and we ran a, a competition essentially where we put out a call for proposals and then we assembled a jury and then we selected the final winners of uh, each box from that jury. So you're coming to us asking for a box to paint on um, and that would sort of fall outside of the parameters of that original project. I don't see any issue necessarily with that, but that is something I think that, the, um, that, the, uh, that we should discuss, um, you know, either with you here potentially or, or, or afterwards. Um, one thing does occur to me is, is there a box uh, near the high school that would be sort of, you know, close by where most of your members are, many of your members are? I know, or, I know there is one on uh, Triangle Street. Yeah, but isn't that painted? It may be one that's not like I feel like, I, feel like I remember be. seeing one, but I might be wrong. There's one near the um, mini mart there next to the rotary that isn't painted. Oh, okay. There's definitely one that is painted on the circle, the one that's on Kendrick Park. Yeah. But you're saying there's one, there's one on the opposite side. So, one thing I think we would need to see is the final design. Um, so front, back, sides, um, that seems pretty important. I think you've taken a good first step in having uh, at least part of the design done. Mm -hmm. But when we had applicants for Electrify Hammers, they sent proposal for the entire, entire box. Um, another is making sure that it gets painted with uh, particular types of paint that will be permanent or you know permanent enough. There were some 
guidelines, which I could provide you guys with, assuming that um, you know you move forward with this, that uh, give you give you a better sense of of how this would work. Do you have um, an artist or somebody who's had experience doing this working with you? Um, we have several people who like are visual artists and work mostly with like paper and digital visual the digital art. Sorry. Um, I have done some mural painting, like, not like on this scale, but I've like done a lot of like wall painting at murals. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if we have anyone with like professional experience, but I think a few of us have participated in murals before. I think that would be key to this uh, in my mind is having um, maybe one of the art faculty in the high school or middle school. And we have great teachers who um, you could draw on who, has, who have some experience to sort of guide you through the actual physical process of doing this, especially if none of you have, have done anything pretty similar to this. Um, that would be a concern that I have. Yeah, that yeah, would be we could. a very good idea. I know um, Kristen Ripley, Miss Ripley, um, is the art teacher at our high school, and I could certainly reach out to her about this possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we I was planning wondering on... about. Oh. Uh, I was wondering about uh, your funding. Do you guys have the um, funding for this to cover costs? We do. Yeah. We currently have um, a savings as a nonprofit of about uh, twenty five hundred, and that would cover the cost of this. Yeah, I think I think uh, what, what was the budget we gave to artists for doing these? Like five hundred, so that'll be more than enough. Yeah. So I think next steps. Uh, does anybody else? Anybody else on the um, commission have any thoughts or comments? Yeah, I think this is. I like it. Good for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I I also salute your um, idea and your excitement and the other work you're doing. You know, relative to. Um, consciousness raising and political activism in town. My only other um, thought is just once you've identified the box is to find out who owns it. If it's, you know, what utility company um, we did uh, ask for permission um, from the different owners of the boxes and um, I wasn't involved in the, uh, the past paintings, but there might be some prep work that needs to happen ahead of time um, to yes, prepare them. Do you have to degrease them, is. I remember? Yep. And then um, prime them. Right. Yeah, there's, a, there's. it's not just a matter of going showing up with a bucket of paint and painting the mural <laughs> on it. So there's more, <laughs> more work than that. Right. Uh, so we work with the DPW and we identified um, the boxes that they owned in town and we can you know, assuming again that the that the commission uh, approve, like you know, gives you our official stamp of approval, we can help you know you know work with the DPW to to, to figure that out. That would um, be. Great. I'm not yeah. sure if they on Triangle Street or not, but if they do, that would be amazing. Yeah, and if you guys look around and there's some boxes you think, oh, this could work or that could work, you know, send me a, a note. Um, let me know, and then I can tr tr try to find out. We can do the same. So I think um, the next step would be for me to to take you off of the panel, let you guys you can hang out, you know, as just uh, observers, um, or if we need you to chime in on something, and then we can discuss it amongst ourselves and see what we think the next steps should be. Um, but one thing that I'm going to push for is for you to definitely have some um, adult, I suppose is the right word, you know, preferably, you know, a fa faculty member you could work with who, who has some direct hands-on experience doing um, this kind of, this kind of mural painting. So I think that's going to be important. Yeah, we can definitely reach out to our art teachers, I think. Great. Um, all right, so I'm going to, do you guys have any last comments? No, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks.
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna see what happens here. Okay, so, uh, Julian, can you stop sharing your screen? All right, and then I'm gonna try to boot you and see if you get kicked out. Come, just come back onto that Zoom link I sent you. Uh, let's see. All right, I think this will work. Putting them on hold. All right. So, um, yeah, what should we do in terms of next steps for these guys? Well, I think it's a great idea if everything mm -hmm. falls into place. I think. Um, it's hard to do more than just to say, I think it's a great idea if things fall into place because we'd have to make sure all the ducks are lined up properly and uh, the, we can approve the art. So I think from my point of view is if everybody else or majority agree that it's definitely something we would like to look into, we should let them bring back the requested items um, so we can look at it. We, we need to identify, as you said, the the box and we need to see the design and we need to make sure they're using the right paints. So one concern one concern I have is that um, there was a process for the other boxes that we're not following here and yeah. whether or not this then opens the door to you know sort of anybody asking for a box to paint and, and if that matters. Well I hear you I understand the concern it doesn't bother me because, I mean, these are students wanting to paint the boxes and, you know, just because somebody else wants to do it, we don't have to say yes. I agree. I mean, we're not a court. We don't have to follow precedent. And besides, I won't make any comments about precedent, but apparently it's not as important as it used to be. Oh, shucks, I just did. Yeah, I think it's a special situation because it's their, um, a special group of kids that you know they came in with their presentation and they're aware of you know taking the right avenues to do this and i feel that that's um that's showing good citizenship and all that should be let, me put, it, let me put it this way they're an indistinguishable group so the next group of people that show up are going to be either distinguish, distinguishable or they're going to be redundant because it's already been done. That's the way I'm thinking. Alan, Dara, any thoughts on that issue? My question about the shield was kind of to me the design question, you know, because I don't think that shield as a logo, it's the biggest thing in the design. And I don't know how many people even know what it means, whereas all the other images, people would know what they mean. So I would just ask, you know, why is that logo the biggest thing in the design? That's a, it's a great idea, and they, they presented really well. Ellen? Yeah, I think it's hard to. Um make a call until we see the full design you know they kept saying the front of the box but there really is no real front or back you know it, it needs to be seen in the round so um before i would want to sign off or give it a stamp of approval i'd want to see the full design and maybe they can incorporate the sunrise movement or something Oh yeah, they in lettering so people understand what that is, and um, but yeah, I, I think in theory it, it's wonderful. And if we're not sponsoring the electric box painting um, project anymore, then I don't have a problem with with um, a group proposing 
to do something. The other point is we're not paying for it. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Okay, so it seems like we're all in agreement that, that it's fine for us to potentially give this our, our stamp of approval. I agree with you guys on that. Um, so what we're asking for them is, is at least two things. One, to come back to us with a full design. And I had suggested that they have um, uh, uh, a teacher or another um, artist who's able to be the um, project manager, let's call it. Uh, what do you guys think about that idea? Yep. Fair. That's fair. Yep. So if they can come back to us with those two things, then wait, we can. Wait. We got to have a location. Location. Well, I feel like location almost would follow from yeah. those two things. Yeah, I think that's kind of important. No. Yeah, because remember you said if this Propose... owned by, it's owned by somebody. We got to make sure we can get the permission, et cetera. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they'll only be able to paint. It's, well, we can only give approval over a DPW box. So that's going right. to be, but how about a proposed proposed location? Yeah. The, oh, yes, yeah, what I meant. Okay. That's what, oh, yeah, good. Yeah. So, uh, could okay. you kick me back to panelists to um, attendee, please? Yeah. I'm trying to do that. I don't know. I think you have to do that yourself. If I kick you out, sorry, you might not be able to come back, but I'm going to try it. Let's see. There we go. That might have gotten rid of them permanently. I hope they can get back in. <laughs> I do see, though, that at least um, Amrita is there, so she could share some of this um, with the other presenters. OK, so I think what we're going to ask of them is uh, to come back with a final design, uh, a, a project uh, supervisor, let's call it. Um, what was I calling it? Project manager? Project manager. Uh, you said advisor I, at one point, I'm not sure. Let's call it project manager and then a proposed location. So wait a minute, the teacher is the project manager. Is that what you're saying? Well, they have, they do have a faculty advisor right now, but this person I don't believe is, uh, has any neural experience. And I, I think they definitely need somebody who has neural experience to- I, I do too, but I'm trying to find, figure out what to put in the minutes and now I'm confused. Do we want a teacher advisor? We want a project a manager, manager with, with mural painting experience. A manager? Yes, let's That's call. a different word from, a, to me, that's a very different concept. Okay, let's call it, yeah, you're right. Okay, call it an advisor is better. Okay. You're right. It's too formal to be, yeah. Okay. I think we're, how how yeah. do um, we go about identifying the DPW boxes or do we let them do that work? I think the best thing to do is have them propose a box or two, uh, maybe even propose several boxes, and then we can and then we can ask as opposed to okay. I suppose I could, one of us could walk around <laughs> this general area, but uh, I think it's better to let them do that work. Okay. And then we can and then I can go to the DPW and see her. And do we, um, maybe Shoshana, you have it, um, sort of all the specs that Amy had when she managed the project in terms of like what type of paint to use and how to prep the boxes so we can share that with the, with the group? I have that. Oh, you have that. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, um, I think we're done with Sunrise Amherst. Yes. Yes, okay, great. So chair reports, um, jumping back into our agenda. Well, actually, I see somebody named Sarah I'm, as a, a public attendee. This, Oops. Does she want to make public comment? Does anybody want to make public comment? Nope, she's disappeared. All right, I think she was probably with Sunrise. Um, I will send them, and by the way, I'll follow up with an email to the, to the, uh, to the members who presented. All right, chair report. Um, yeah, not a lot to report. Um, 
it's been a pretty quiet month when it comes to public art stuff. Um, the only thing that's coming up is that uh, making it public seminars are starting, are gonna start in, in uh, I'm not sure the exact date, they start in early March. So I'm looking forward to those. Um, nothing else has come across my desk besides uh, this Sunrise project um, in, the last, in the last month. So it's just been very quiet. So what was the first thing you said, I'm sorry? The um, Making It Public program starts in early March. So it starts soon. Uh, do we want to talk about the minutes, get that out of the way? Well, the public meeting law is on my back. <laughs> okay. The one thing that I saw in the minutes was that the, um, the name of the sculpture by Harold Grinspoon, which you describe, I would just scratch the description and give it the name, which is Orion's Belt. What is it, Orion? Yeah, Orion's Belt. O R I. Built. Yeah, I didn't know what margaroided is. <laughs> so that's helpful to just do that. Yeah, yeah it's fine with me. I was <laughs> so wait a minute, which minutes are we talking about now, please? Um, These are January 3rd. Give me a second. Sorry, I'm having trouble. Okay. January 3rd? Correct, at the, uh, toward the end of the document. My computer doesn't like me. Man, come on guys, let me try this. Okay, uh, so this is, try again. Oh. Okay, now it's working, let me get the minutes. January. Third, and we're scratching. Okay, so this is about uh, never. Oh, here it goes. Okay, so we're so we're working this the sculpture. And I'll change, I'm deleting, which included two black vertical limbs, embracing three, whatever they, they are. And I'm putting o yes. Orion. Orion's belt. belt. Yeah. Okay. okay. The other thing I would suggest just in general is just use people's last names. You can just list the people's last names. And then when you refer to anybody by name, just use their last name. Mm consistent and it's uh it's easy to read and it makes the most sense what are we talking just everywhere you can yeah do that later oh, yeah i am going to do it later i'm just looking to see what you're talking about I, uh, it's I, just in some places you say bill kazan other places you say dr kazan like it's right. just it, yes. it just to make it consistent so you know it's the same person right i'll use the title and the last name and apologies bill if i mispronounced your last name. Okay, title and last name. Okay. Okay. Anything else that anybody found? No, everything looked good. Yep, those were, my, I had the exact same two comments, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sarah, did you notice anything? No, okay. So uh, I, should we do, we do we need to do this formally or should we just say, barring those changes, we accept the minutes, Jim, and you can submit them to Angela after the meeting? Let's do that. Okay. okay. So we're good. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. All right. All right, moving on. Um, okay, where's my agenda? It keeps disappearing. Treasurer reports. No changes. Okay. North Common, no changes. Percent for art, no changes. <laughs> Poetic dialogue, there I am frustrated. And uh, Dara's said she wants to help work on this and I'm excited okay. to see something happen, but I have, cannot get Jane Wall to get back to me. Dara. 
I did a terrible thing after uh -oh. I wrote to you and I made an appointment with Brooke Steinhauser okay. and okay. we agreed to meet uh, yesterday at two o'clock and I was deeply involved in a big editing job I was doing and the time went by and I missed making the call. So she and I rescheduled okay. and we're going to meet on Wednesday. Great. This Wednesday, and I'll send you all a note if that was okay, sure. just with her filling us in on what they think about the poetic dialogue. Super. Thank you for taking the initiative to do that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Boltwood. Now, there's something we have Wait, to get I've to. I've got some more on poetic oh. dialogue. Oh, good. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I've been in correspondence with um, Alan Snow, huh. and um, he's planning on giving the area a little more attention. Um, and I didn't want to quote how much we were had for money for that because I couldn't remember what our actual funds were. What are what are our funds for that exactly? I we extra. I just couldn't remember. My recollection, and don't quote me on this, I have to go back and check, is that I thought we had 500, but we had to get those funds extended, which we did do. Um, I, I, you know, as far as I know, I sent the email and I, I'm pretty sure that they confirmed that those funds were extended, um, the uh, Amherst uh, uh, Cultural Council, and I think it was 500. So you want me to check right now? I can dig through my email. Um, or, or at your leisure. Okay. And those funds would go to DPW? Because I thought DPW was going to do the work for free, but maybe those funds could be used to pay for, well, I don't know. How, what, what are we thinking in terms of the use of those funds and how that would, how that's going to work? Yeah, I thought they're going to go to like flowers or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't I think know. they were going to, yeah, um, perhaps more uh, daffodil bulbs. Right. And Recon right, reconstructing the walkway around there, which has been completely sunken in. So it might be to cover some pea stone or edging materials for the DPW, but I think the labor was going to be donated. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a metal, there's like a metal path, like metal edging that's supposed to sort of create a pathway, but that's almost completely grown over. Exactly. Um, so I guess finding a way for them to re- assert that and then the appropriate infill and surrounding plantings. Correct. Um, I do so believe I, a lot of the daffodils still come up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they did it as far as this past year, yeah. But you can see sort of remnants of the edging, um, yep. but it, yeah, it, I believe, and again, it's on my work computer, but um, you know, there, there's the artist sketch we could reference yes. to show sort of where the, the pathway went. Yeah, and I think you sent me a copy of that. So I think I okay. also have a copy of that. Um, and when I was there physically, I was looking and you can you can still see that it's there, but very hidden at this point. Yes. So. so how would that money, we have to just transfer. So would we buy the daffodils or in other words, would they, would we just give them the money and they would do all the work or do you know what that, how that, uh, relationship with work, Sean? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to see Alan next Tuesday. That's our that's our um, hearing, right? Alan, mm -hmm. like Alan, that we've got a tree hearing yeah. like on next Tuesday, I think, right? Yes. So I'll actually see him then and then I, I could talk to him like in person, maybe even I'll email him and see if maybe he wants to just like pop over there afterwards because it's right on sunset where our tree hearing is. Oh, yeah. And then that's on, we have a site visit on Monday at five o'clock on sunset. And then I think that we have our, am I getting this right? Our meeting on the 8th. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll be at both. He should be at both. Yeah, he'll Ooh, be see. at both. And so I can talk to him on I'll see I'll send him an email and see if maybe after the tree 
um, site visit, if maybe we could pop over because it's it's you know right near sunset. Who is we? Me and Ellen have a site visit. Well, we the whole tree committee. Oh, oh okay, good. Has a site good. visit with Alan Stone, who's the tree warden. Yeah, that's his official title for the town. Yeah. Is it is it stone or snow? Snow, like falling out of the no. sky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, thank you for that, and just keep us all informed. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll email him and see if he will actually go and, and like look at it cuz you know he's been involved in that project already a lot anyways. Yeah, he was there. I think when you and I were there. So he knows yep. he, he definitely knows the site. So he yeah. may not even have to go see it in person. He might just be able to say I think it needs x y and z and it's going to cost so much. But yeah, it's true actually. He is very, very keenly aware of all that kind of stuff in town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, including like the tree in the in the cul-de-sac in front of our house, you know, like he's like, oh yeah, that's this tree and it's this old and it's not quite dying yet. And so yeah, he, he's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any, any idea when you all are gonna want to have something happening there to mark the re installation and all that stuff for art, art week. week and when is art week art week is like the last days of april and the first days of may usually so that's uh, the last week in april and the first week in may yeah and it's like um it's i think it usually runs like kind of 10 days it's it, it includes like the last weekend in april and then the first weekend in may and then okay. like the week in between. Okay. Because if I'm gonna get some people together to do something to commemorate it, I need to start with having a date. Yeah. <laughs> so do you all have a preference for the weekend, a weekday, eve, afternoon, midday, any kind of particular thing? Well, when, when I, I did an um, architecture tour that was a weekend morning, not too early, 10 o'clock or something, which seemed to be a good time. Um, but there's other times that could work. To connect it to that? Well, we're, I, we haven't really discussed resuming that again, although that is something that we could talk about. Um, uh, but I don't think so. I think this would be a, a separate event. I mean, what do you guys think in terms of day and time? Well, we could do April 30th. That's the last day in April is actually on a Saturday or the first or the seventh or the eighth. Cause those are probably the, I don't know. Has Boston sent out, let me see. Has Boston like declared exactly when they're doing? I haven't April heard anything week? yet. I have not heard yeah, anything yet. I, it's been kind of confusing because Art Week was canceled last year. Right. April 30th is a good target date to shoot for. We don't have to commit 100% now. Why don't we put that as a tentative? OK, yeah, that feels that's safe. How, that's what, what are we calling this thing we're putting on April 30? I think it's called Poetic Dialogue because it's those two poets talking to each other on rocks. I, I, it was an event, though. And, we're going to call it the relaunching of the poetic dialogue, something okay, like fine. that. Okay, fine. So um, the daffodil run in Amherst is on Sunday, April 24th this year. Okay, so we won't crash into that. And unless you want, does it does the race track does the race go right by that? I mean it's full of it, daffodils. It, it has. I, I've I've run it and I'm pretty sure it has gone past that. But I'm just wondering if we tie into that since there'll be a lot of people around anyway. True. And the daffodils will be all they'll, they'll people be will be bloom. excited about that. <laughs> Let me see if I can get pull up the map. But I don't feel like people who are running that are going to want to then go to the opening afterwards. <laughs> well, if we offer them like oranges and <laughs> bananas or something, <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather I think it's better to do it the next weekend, I think. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'm going to stick with April 30th for now, and then new information will come into people's heads about it, and we can change it. Okay. Sure. But just for me to talk to uh, Brooke Steinhauser, I'll need a kind of a tentative date. Yeah. Good. Anything else about this? Okay, great. I'm really excited that this is moving along. Thank you, Shona and Dara, for jumping in and working on this and let me know what you need from me to help facilitate. Yeah, it's just a quote on that amount that I need from you. Oh, okay. Yes. At the end of the meeting, I'll get it to you if you want, even, or just afterwards. Okay. Um, okay, so the other, now another big topic. Um, is the uh, portal gallery, Boltwood Walk. So we got a grant for 2,500, and now we got to do something with it. <laughs> and that's something, <laughs> presumably, <laughs> which is what the grant was for, is to put another artwork in there. Um, and so we need to begin to think about process and timetable. Um, we only have enough money to do, at least that pile of money is enough, if we're going by what we did last year, to do one installation. So lots of questions come up uh, in my mind anyway, which is, first of all, are we going to do one? Do we want to try to turn that money into two? I don't feel like that's really feasible. Do we want to try to raise money to do a second? How long? If we do one, will it be up? When do we want to have it up by? And then we can work backwards and, and kind of think about the um, RFP and then the journeying process, et cetera, if we're going to go that route. Um, or do we want to hand select artists? We, we had a very preliminary conversation about this last time. Um, so I'm just wondering, I think we need to start planning. That's basically what I'm saying. Okay. So yeah. last year, the opening, we, we, the opening was, I'm trying to think of the, it, it was um, early September is where, when we had the opening and the installation was happening in August. Um, and then it ran through, you know, January. So that way it captured the students and the fall semester. Um, any thoughts on whether or not that model makes sense again for this next round? Are there any observable ne negatives that came out from those dates that we ought to think about? Not really. It was okay. nice. I I wish we had something for the summertime though, because people do like dine outside in the summer and stroll around. Yeah. And but there are a lot of people that leave. You know, we we definitely have a bigger population come September. Yep. So it's not imperative to have it during the summer. I would say if we're only going to do one, let's make it September or late August. Do we want to try to do one that would run for a longer period of time? I mean, that's a possibility. If we could have something installed um, this spring that would run all the way, could, could run all the way through early winter. That, that would just put a little crunch on the timetable now because we'd really have to, you know, get the RFP out or, or have our artist pool and then uh, start organizing the jurying process. Yeah. Well, I say absent money to do a second one. Let's not get sidetracked on that. I mean, if we decide we want to do a second one, then we've got to have a discussion about where the money's going to come from. And absent that, we have a precedent. It worked. Why not use that one? The, what worked? Yeah. But then broke, don't fix it. That's my inclination. Um, I'm wondering, the best thing might be, you know, so I was sort of the primary actor uh, in the first round, and I'd like to still be involved very much in the second round here. I'm wondering if there's not somebody else though, who'd want to work with me on it, um, just to have somebody to bounce ideas off of and or help me with a little bit of the uh, behind the scenes labor. I think. One of the big decisions for me moving forward at this point 
is going to be um, whether we do a, a call or whether we kind of handpick artists. I mean, to me, that's one of the first decisions that has to be made that will determine the rest of the process. So we could talk about that a little bit now. Um, I don't, you know, but if somebody wants to work with me behind the scenes as well, that would be great. You don't have I'll to do that. Shona, okay. Um, what do you guys, so, but let's just at least have a preliminary converse, conversation and then Shona and I can um, talk more about it, about handpicking the pool versus doing a, a call. Dara? Well, one, I just, one way of, just, uh, Jim, Dara had her hand up. Let's, I can't see that. Yeah. Uh, just to fill me in, what, what's been the protocol in the past? Yeah. So typically, well, for the electrical, there's no typical because we haven't done that many of these. But the electrical boxes was a call. Um, so, we, we, you know, we put out the call and then we got the pool and then we went out. Uh, the portal gallery, because we considered it sort of pilot program, which was to sort of test the waters and, and see if we could pull it off. We, we just picked three artists that we thought as a, as a commission would be good fits. Um, so, and it is, as far as best practices go um, in, in terms of public art projects, they're both acceptable. That's what, so it's up to us. Well, one thing to do is see if we can identify three people if that's what we we're saying, talk about it, and then let's identify, then say, okay, how, how, how cool is this for us? And if we think that's just the greatest thing ever, then we go with them. And if we think, well, that's pretty good, then we might start discussing the possibility of putting out a call. So I don't understand what the um, rationale is for not having a public call. Well, doing a lot of work and not getting an applicant pool that's suitable. Right. It saves a lot of work if you just identify the people. Well, so if somebody comes to the commission and says, why isn't there a public call? That's the answer? Yeah. No. <laughs> Something <laughs> a little more. <laughs> I say because that's what the public precedent was before the Public Art Commission, and we felt that was going to identify a valuable uh, project that would be best suitable for the circumstances. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I do feel of, like that yeah. process, like, um, provided a higher caliber of effort in the presentations and the ideas, you know, whereas like the big open call one, you, it feels like there's a lot of people that don't feel like they're gonna get chosen. So they don't put a lot of effort into it, you know, whereas the, when it was a small pool, you got people that were like really putting their all into it. Yeah. By the way, I'm not plugging either one. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, pros and cons. Yeah, I mean, I understand the pros part. I, I do. But I also think that we would have to have a, a good answer for why the public is not called in a public art project. But that, that is some... Typically in pu public, like very high stakes public art comp competitions, it's not a general call. So that's not the way it normally works. Normally it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you start with a, so, you know, a selected pool of artists. I, I'm imagining that when we get to our um, percent for art projects, they'll, they'll work in that way, although it's going to require a lot of discussion and research. Um, but, you know, because you're really looking for people who have the, Ability and expertise. So in those projects, you know, you're talking about big budgets, hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, right? And you really have to identify people who have experience working at that scale and with those kinds of budgets. Here, obviously, that's not the case, um, but but it is a very strange space with very particular parameters. Um, so that's what I, I would say. The argument for for handpicking artists in this instance would be because it's such an unusual space, and we really want people who have an understanding of. Um, or their work is suitable. We know that their work potentially would be suitable for a space like this. On the other hand, having an open call could be great because you're gonna get people who come up with crazy ideas that we wouldn't have been able to think of or identify um, in terms of their work and, and their interests. So there's a, there was also a possibility of doing something that requires people to 
present something that has to do with their reasons for wanting to do it and their credential, you know, a little like you give people some incentive to take the call more seriously if that's what you're worried about. Sure. Well, I think there's another underlying assumption here, and I'm not saying it's right or it's not wrong, but it is an assumption, and that is the public has a right to uh, be uh, given a chance to bid on public art. But the other side of the coin is the public art is there to be admired by the public. So there's two ways of looking at it. One is the public of the Public Art Commission is the benefit to the public of the art. And the, another way of looking at it is the public for the Public Art Commission is to benefit the artists. And if you take the former, then the people don't have, um, they don't have uh, a claim on, on any project that they don't have the necessarily the right to participate in seeking to be the artist for it. So that's, I can see reasonable minds differing, but I think underlying assumption of that is public means you have to give the public the right to submit proposals. Um, that to me is not self-evident, possible, but not self-evident. Ellen, what are your thoughts? Um, I think the first round made sense to do an invitation, um, but I think at this round, I. I'm leaning more toward a RFP, mm -hmm. see what we get. I, I think we just have to make it really appealing <laughs> so that we get qualified people, you know, um, yeah. we, we have to market it properly. Um, it, it is a tricky space. Um, you know, I still worry about it not being accessible. Um, I think that's just an ongoing problem, but um, I, I'd be up for doing, to see, you know, doing an RP and seeing, you know, what type of proposals we get. And so then if they're a, all bad, we don't, I mean, we can yeah. send out another proposal or. Well, th that, th I was about to say that if you're gonna do it that way, there's a third possibility is you make a call, but you make it clear that you're not obligated to pick from the submissions somehow, you know, politely and tactfully. I mean, that's <laughs> otherwise you put the... the call out, you put the call out, you don't pick somebody in the call and somebody's been out of shape because I did all this work on the call, blah, blah, blah. And you didn't even pick anybody from the call. I can see that getting in the way. I mean, that's typically what we've done for the town hall gallery each year. So, right. um, you know, it, it's, sort of in line with and what we did with the electrical boxes. The town hall gallery is different. Town hall gallery, there's no jurying and everybody who applies gets in, barring the work isn't obscene in a way that would be a, a bad fit for town hall. So it's, it's a bit different. It, it is a public call, um, but there's no, uh, yeah, there's no. I, I think we've rejected a few things. Really? Not I my time. I don't think it <laughs> there was one religious, there was some kind of yeah. commentary on uh, Christianity, I believe, that raised a few questions that it was just as I was starting. But um, all right, well, I'm happy to, I, I'm i sort of on the fence, but um, if we're going to do an RFP, uh, I think getting it out sooner rather than later would be advisable so that we can get stuff give people time um, and make it more than, you know, make them really submit a, a, some kind of detailed proposal. Uh, the, the, the other problem is that um, when we picked artists, we were able to walk them through the space so they could really see the space and take measurements and, and you know, really get a feel for it, which we can't really do with an RFP. I mean, I think we might want to do two rounds where we get a big mass of them and then we kind of cut it down to some finalists. And then we could take the finalists through potentially something like that. Um, although maybe that's overly complicated. Yeah, it'd be good if we could um, get something out to the schools, to the colleges, even the high school, you know, mm -hmm. so we can get some more. Um, 
proposals. Yeah. It doesn't have to just be professional artists. Okay, so Shona, why don't you and I kick around some ideas for, um, for this and what an RFP would look like. And maybe by our next meeting, um, we could try to have one drafted. Um, and the, you know, we could all look at it together. And then if it seems okay, just try to get it out there to as many places as we can. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, great. And, uh, and we'll shoot for the same timetable we used last year, roughly speaking, installing toward the end of the summer for an opening in early fall with some kind of performance like we did last year. And this time we'll have the budget for the performance too. Um, okay, great. Let me uh, bring up my, my uh, agenda again. Uh, Town Hall Gallery, what's happening there? Okay, so um, Chris Bordenka took down his stuff. There's nothing there now. I met with a artist um, two weeks ago, I, I guess now at this point. And, but she, like, we were going to put her stuff up, but she actually wasn't ready yet. So um, I've been in contact and I've spent actually like the past two days working with um, Bella Homestead and she's got stuff that we're going to put up um, on Thursday. So that'll displace the other person and the other person will go after, is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. whenever she gets it together, we'll, we'll put her up afterwards. Okay, and that everybody's happy with that solution? Yeah, everyone's happy with that solution for now. And then um, Bella Homestead also has this other idea for another show in the summertime. She's, um, she's in the process of moving into the Arbors. Uh, it's like a retirement community. And there's two other women there that are also artists. And she was talking to them about, you know, art in the town hall and stuff. And they got it together to, uh, or they're working on like getting it together to have a show possibly in the town hall for, that's about, it's kind of like a retrospective of their lives because they're all like in their nineties <laughs> and about like, you know, their process through their, their years. It seems really sweet. Okay, sounds good. Is this what, one of these people, the woman who kept going into town hall and bugging Angela? <laughs> I think that's the, uh, that's the other one. The um, I see. Who's the lady? Well, yeah, well, there's two of them that like, so <laughs> they have very similar names. One's that photographer that did like that photography showcase out behind um, the BID that time. Oh, she's the one who, 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 yes, she's not, she's, she's my, my age, roughly. I mean, so she's not the. Uh, oh, yeah. Isabella Del Olio. Yeah. So they're both named Bella, essentially, which is, which is why I'm so confused. Is it, she's the one who's delaying. Is Isabella Del Olio? Is that yes, correct? Yes. Okay. She's the one that's delaying. I thought she was going in like two weeks ago, but no, it's not happening. And so, um, Luckily, there was like this other person that just wandered in that was just like, hey, and she's, okay. you know, she wants do we, to show. Do we need to put out a call for applicants for app moving forward for, for a town hall? Um, uh, yeah, I think so eventually, because like we're going to need some, like I think we're going to have, you know, her show, uh, Bella's show up for a couple months, and then we'll have hopefully the other Bella's up for a couple months. And then we could do that retrospective of Arbor's citizens up for a couple months. Mm, gosh. And then, so I guess like late summer probably is what we're looking at where we don't have anyone set yet. Anything else about town hall? No. No, okay. Um, uh, I forgot to mention in my chair report, although there's nothing to report. I haven't heard anything from Gigi or Eric about their project. Maybe Jim, you have a little uh, inside scoop on that? Uh, yes, I do. And no, I'm not going to discuss it. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. 
Um, so yeah, we're waiting with bated breath to hear because we're all excited about that. So, I, so uh, what I will do, however, is I may be able to get a message to the appropriate parties that, that, okay. that there are people waiting with bated breath. Yes, great. <laughs> I can do that. Yes, I, I actually talked that project up to a few people. So, um, you know, oh, good. Yes, I think people are excited about it. So hopefully it'll happen. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else have anything else for now? No? All right. Um, Shona, I can get you that number even while you're hanging on the line. Um, okay. If everybody else wants to sign off, I will call the uh, Public Art Commission meeting adjourned at um, 512. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Nice seeing you all today. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Shona, I'm going to stop recording, but you can stay on.